tell me a little bit about how you came up with this idea? Where did it all start? Uh, um, this actually began, the initial idea for it began actually in the mid aughts. Uh, it was like a, kind of like a one page treatment for a short film. Um, and uh, uh, about a year and a, oh God, like 18 months ago, I've been doing a lot of reading and research on the particular issues in this, in this uh, movie. And um, I called up my uh, close collaborator who worked on a bunch of projects in the past at Sigurd Gilmer and um, kind of pitched this idea. And we started working on it. It was going to be a short film. And by the time you know we got like 45 pages into it, it was like, wow, we can do a whole thing of this of two people in one apartment for a feature film. And I thought that was a really exciting idea to keep something really contained and there were so many levels to, to what we were doing. Um, and so it just kind of like came together all like that. And it's, it started a very conceptual um, place. Uh, that's where everything kind of like begins in my head. And, and then it's just kind of like drawing in all the right people to kind of fill that out. And, you know, it's, it really is a collaborative. I don't believe anymore in this auteur theory you know, kind of thing. It's really everybody's individual contributions that you know, make, they tell me what this thing is. And it, and it started in this idea of, you know, I've been watching a lot of like romantic comedies and like sitcoms. It's not what I thought you were going to reference. It's, uh, <laughs> I know, it, it right? Just, you feel, or that you would think he'd <laughs> be yes. watching. Yes, yes. So, well, and it filled with a lot Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> to the, totally. Well, and more of a, so like Seinfeld and, you know, all these things just filled with this like real sense of claustrophobia and dread in there, that's the stuff that scares it's terrifying. me. terrifying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never thought about it that way, but now I'm not going to watch those kinds of shows the same way again. Well, there's this amazing thing on Vimeo you can find, it's called, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's basically this guy who edited all the, 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 the scenes in Seinfeld where there's nobody in the shot all together. So it's just these like, like you know, canned laughter over these ominous shots of like yeah, exteriors of yeah. buildings and um, yeah, and it's, I think it's called With like, the nothing. song, right? Yeah, well, you hear yeah. the tail end of it, you know, the slap bass, <laughs> yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of where I started that, and in particular, sort of, um, and then, you know, as, as we were putting this together, you know, basically movies are made four or five times over, you know, in the writing, and then the, the casting of all the people, and then in the filming, and then in the editing, and then the re-editing. So that's like five times. Um, and in that, each step of the way, I sort of understand what is going on here. And what starts out is something that's very conceptual, and these ideas becomes very personal after a while. Because you start to realize, oh, this is why I'm doing this, and this is what it's telling me. And I think this movie is very particular to a feeling of isolation and uh, particularly in regards to Los Angeles, because I think that the portrayal of, in this movie is not specifically about Hollywood or anything around that, um, but around Los Angeles, which is this expansive place, but it's very isolated. You know, you basically become trapped in your own little thing. It's so hard to get around and, and all these things, and so that was that was partly what was feeding. This is why I live in New York. Well, yeah, well, there's a different type of thing. I, I guess there. you could apply it there, too. In New yeah. York, you get stuck in apartments. In Los Angeles, you get stuck in the car. Yeah, that's the pod. So how did you two get looped into this? I mean, what does an audition for a movie like this mm -hmm. even entail? Well, um, Patrick and Sigrid and I all went to college together. And when they were writing this film and were thinking of who the perfect villain would be, they both, independent of each other, thought of me. <laughs> So I kind of lucked into this role um, just by being maybe a little bit of inspiration for them. I don't know. Are you really a villain? I mean, in real life. That's more fun <laughs> than <really? bad. laughs> I know what you did. You audition for it? Yeah. Yeah. What did you yeah. have to do in the audition? Uh, was just a few scenes from the script. I had read the script in advance, and I felt immediately. Uh, to the bathtub scene. We did? Mm -hmm. uh, on the floor. Sam's wow. We did the, yeah, there was a, it was, I don't know, it was just, it was, I felt connected to it right away, and I didn't know anybody involved in the production, but I thought, oh my god, if I don't get this, then I'm wrong about myself and the world, and there's, it felt like, I just, 
I really felt attached to it. And uh, so yeah, I met him in the I met Patrick and Sigrid and everybody in the casting process. Did you get the sides for the audition or did you see the whole script? I think I read the script. What was your first impression of it and like kind of what you'd have to put yourself through for this? Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, we have no I was like, well, fuck yeah, this is, this is for me. Yeah, this is, this is mine. And other actors might read the script and think, oh my god, I want nothing to do with this, or this is going to be too much, or, but it just, I knew, I knew right away whoever wrote the script was somebody that I could work with, and this is a character I could really sing back to. And how do you feel about certain foods that you had to work with in this movie now? Because okay. like I know I didn't want to eat any of those after watching the movie. Yeah, I'll probably never eat a pop turn again, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I was thinking I've, more I macaroni have, and cheese. I I'm having a hard time looking at that right and now. Cheese, yeah, I guess I haven't consumed that either. I mean, in in my little dressing room, I had my my kit. You know, it was like Pepto Bismol. Advil, uh, seltzer water, like <laughs> Maalox. And yeah, and to be honest, I haven't, um, I haven't been eating as much. So <laughs> well, I have a confession to make. Yeah. I am a convert to the chimichanga now. Really? <laughs> like, totally Rita's? Like, and I buy them at, like the nasty ones from Costco. Like, and yes. do you put them in a bag of chips? No, I actually I haven't taken it to that level, but I do keep those around in my freezer now. Thanks, you were, you were. So into it when we were shooting. I know. Well, also because I had been not, I lost quite a bit of weight over the course of the shooting, and so the scenes where I did get to eat, I was like, yes, like, let's go. Yeah, but your body couldn't handle really it. Yeah, it did kind of. It was crazy. I can't even imagine how like your body can handle eating that much because I mean, I assume you were eating most of it, right? Yeah, and so like we had you were eating. Yeah, we had spit buckets. Oh, you were lovely. eating. I was eating everything. And so I didn't eat, you know, when, when we broke for lunch, I was like, that's, no, I'm not. <laughs> Had enough Pop-Tarts. The excess flesh diet. You guys should make like a cookbook or something. The next. excess flesh diet, yeah. <laughs> you want to lose weight or you want to gain it? We need to loop it in somehow and get like the box tops one because it's all like pre-processed, <laughs> like ridiculous, like only things made to craft. Is there any reason you chose these specific foods to focus on, or did you let them choose at least what they like to eat to a point? No, that was all. Uh, <laughs> that was all in the script. Pop tarts are always a big thing. Mac and cheese. Um, mac and cheese. Um, yeah, that was all. That was all there. Obviously, we, you know, created kind of parodies of these different um, brands, you know, for for the movie. Uh, you know, it, it was also to. The idea with the style of this was to, you know, ultimately it's, it's like this, this movie to me is about this idea of subjective reality and, you know, how we, how everybody sort of creates their own, you know, vision of reality. There is no, you know, base reality, basically. And that's what this movie is, basically. I mean, that's what this, the, the style, that's the, the, the story that's going on. So everything in it is a, is a projection of some sort. So you take you, you feed in all this sort of like information that we're getting from pop culture and from you know all these, these commercial products and all these things and then it, it kind of gets regurgitated and it's twisted in a circle. No pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. Well. well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but that was all there. Was I all feel like this movie is right for puns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it, maybe it'll be, become a part of pop culture because it really is a rehash, you know. Like, it's kind of a remix. Yeah. It's got that feel to it. It's got like a surreal quality to it. How do you incorporate that kind of stuff in your editing? Like specifically maybe the slow motion? Because it does feel very natural, the, the places that you choose to put it in. Um, yeah, I mean that was always an important sort of uh, part of this sort of idea. I really, really like shooting at high speeds and you know, slow motion too. Especially to heighten the, these really kind of growth, you know. These things that we don't want to see, see them that way. You, you know? mean like biting off a duck head? Yeah, biting <laughs> off a duck head, you know, I mean, you know all that stuff. It was, um, yeah, the, I mean, the, overall, the, a lot of people have been sensing with this thing is we were shooting with very, very long lenses, very, very close, and so it has this little very flat quality and very, very claustrophobic, you know, and then, you know, the different changes in terms of 
moving into the spaces where, you know, it's all about that, you know, the chewing and the eating because, you know, I mean, I, I get that feeling a lot too, you know, it's like, I, I don't like to watch other people eat, you know. <laughs> I mean, does anyone? <laughs> no, no, no. No, but it's such a social event. Unless that Kobayashi guy in the hot dogs, <laughs> then I'm in. Yeah. He gets away with it. Yeah. Well, what I love is that eating is normally such a social event, but in, in this, it's really personal. It's like super personal. You know, my character does all of her eating alone. I don't think she eats one thing if, you know, she doesn't eat in public, and that, that's, she makes a point of that. <laughs> Can you guys talk a little bit, without giving it away, about incorporating the big twist? Because you kind of have to be hinting at it the entire time, but not giving it away. Can you gauge how that's working at all while you're on set shooting it, or does all that come through in editing? Um, I, we did a lot of work at the beginning that was really helpful of Bethany and I doing a lot of movement exercises together and getting really comfortable and kind of feeling out each other's physicality so that we could kind of mirror each other in a lot of respects and also just you know this is such an intense film we needed to kind of have that bonding yeah, <laughs> a little trust. four or five days of yeah some good you know trust ball stuff yeah so. but that was always going in that was always the the understanding and however that was crafted and the directing and editing was, you know it was all new. How was it taking this through the editing process? Because, I mean, you, you wrote the movie, you directed the movie, now you're editing the movie, and I imagine you're watching it like time and time again. Are you able to gauge if it's working anymore or not at a point? No, not at all. <laughs> I don't know if it's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, from, from my point of view, I really don't think there is a twist per se. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, there's no moment of that. It, 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 it is, it's just kind of gradual, but, and it's all there. It's all there in the, in the, in the language of the, the film, you know, and in the language of the uh, editing. Um, but yeah, I mean, any filmmaker is gonna, you know, say this. I mean, it's just you're sitting with that thing for. Oof, when we shot this a year ago, you know, in this in this um, in March, in March of 2014, um, and. Uh, so I was in post for you know we, this this version yeah this version that's that's premiering at, uh, tonight um, is uh, finished late January just like a month ago. Still pretty <laughs> impressive to turn around a whole feature in a year though and have True. it premiering somewhere True. like South by. Well, I have a really great team around me that's that helps support this and, and has you know pushed it forward. So. Again, like I said, you know, I mean, this whole process is not just about one person, you know, I mean, even three people, it's about a lot of people. Um, so it, it wouldn't have happened without all that, and also all the insights that we've been getting back as people watch different versions, because there are different versions of this movie. Um, and, uh, you know. Can you talk a little bit about how it's changed from cut to cut, or maybe even from, you know, first draft to what you did on set to post? Well, uh, I think a lot of people, I don't, not, not these two, but I think a lot of people going into this with what the script was were thinking it was going to be a certain thing, whereas my style is a different comedy. <laughs> and there's the actually like, like a comedy. comedy. Yeah, <laughs> basically. That's what we do though, like, we write comedies and then, you know, it's like, then, I, you know, that's the only way, that's the way it makes it bearable. You know what I mean? That's because I always think that like, everything I, everything that I'm involved with is is hilarious, and I think this movie's hilarious, but nobody else thinks that at all. Uh, and that, and that's, I guess that's subjective just subjective reality. Yeah, I think, I, they will. I think they will. <laughs> maybe, maybe it, it depends. I mean, this is not a movie that's really specific to genre audiences. I mean, we've been put in in the, in the midnight section here in South by Southwest with a lot of other horror movies and. And I never really was going at this in, in terms of like trying to make a horror movie at all. You know, I mean that's just kind of how it turned out, um, in, in a way. Um, and even now, I, I really don't sort of perceive it as such. But it's like a thriller. Yeah. I mean, it's horrific, but not in not in the predictable horror type of way. Is there any kind of concern about it being too horrific? Like when you were on set shooting, maybe were you ever like, all right, maybe this is too much. Let's pull back just a little bit. Um, 
mo a lot of the, our crew is Filipino. <laughs> so, I never felt that. I was always pushing, pushing. I wanted to go further, personally. I, I felt that way. <laughs> I, I was like, okay. <laughs> Did you shoot anything that isn't in the final cut? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, m my version of this movie is is uh, 35 minutes longer than what we have here. And from all of what we shot, it would, it would probably be like a three and a half hour movie. Um, so there's yeah, there's a lot of material. Um, and uh, but you know, I think that this the where the movie's at right now is really really strong, and I'm excited to see how people. I'd be curious to see a director's cut, but as it stands, it is very tight and yeah, it goes definitely. pretty quick, pretty quick and smooth. Like yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm a big, personally a big fan of like just kind of like that. I guess you call it the slow cinema, you know, kind of thing, <laughs> where you know a lot of this stuff was played out. We were shooting in one take, you know, a lot of scenes, and some, a lot of those are, remain intact in this in this version. Um, and I really got handed to, we have a really aggressive shooting schedule, and most of, uh, so yeah, I mean, we didn't really do more than four takes of anything. I mean, some of that stuff was really I feel like that's better off for you take. when you need to eat stuff, yeah. though. I mean, you can't do... Well, when we need to eat stuff. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, it's also like, uh, you know, now's the time. Without the... Having having a bunch of takes in some ways a luxury, but in other ways it's a it's a barrier because you know you've got time to mess around and do, but but when you know you've got just a little bit of time, you I I anyway go in with guns blazing right away. I think that seems to work a lot better for me. So how about shooting in one location? Is that a good thing that you don't have any company moves, or are there certain elements of that that kind of make it? Maybe I mean I guess claustrophobic for you guys to be stuck in there all the time. No, for for me like that um, I I wanted to be really attached to the to the place and the set and I actually slept there the night before we we started shooting because I I wanted it to feel like you know my place. And, um, that was kind of nice. No company moves. <laughs> Did you get to shoot in order? So I imagine you'd have to have a nice place and then destroy it, no? We shot pretty much in order. We had to jump around for a few things, but we did shoot pretty much in order to allow me the time to lose weight over that three weeks. Right, otherwise. Which I lost about 20 pounds. I can't even imagine. Like I can't weeks. tell now what's more difficult, having to eat all that food or just having to lose all that weight. I was very hangry by the end. <laughs> Very hungry. By the end, <laughs> very reasonable. <laughs> are you concerned at all with like how because like eating disorders are a big thing with how people will perceive that element of it? No, I mean I think that this is pretty realistic and honest about that. You know, what I mean? so we, we we did a, you know we, we've experienced a lot of things and you know we've done our research too. You know, so I, I, I never really. I mean, everybody's gonna have their different sort of opinions about those types of things, and this is gonna make people un uncomfortable. Not necessarily in the ways I think people are expecting to be made uncomfortable. Um, We're definitely not glamorizing it. Though. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but but it's, it's kind of like what you said about the comedy earlier. I feel like either you could take this almost in kind of like a playful, eccentric manner, or you could look at it like like a deeply horrific experience. Hopefully, all of that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, in reverse to that, the question you had about the, the um, one location thing, yeah, it was it, it became really claustrophobic. Because it was it was a set actually, it wasn't a real place. You built the whole interior yeah, of the it was, apartment. It was entirely a set. That's why it has that weird. You know, it was like it needed to be a very particular sort of thing that we could only sort of build, and also the trash it. Yeah, it did. as the that building up, sense. building up, and the, as the smell is getting, we, yeah, yeah, it was. Because I like to do all this stuff for real, you know what I mean? When we put the trash on the set, we left it there. <laughs> I'm not quite as bad. Crunch, crunch. <laughs>